It's a 30 second wrap up. Okay. Great. And, and you have five, five and a half minutes. minutes. <laughs> okay. I got my voice training. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hey, Jim, you know, I had the great pleasure of interviewing Richard Attenborough not too long ago, and we reminisced about the great escape. And uh, mm -hmm. I was wondering, the question I asked him was, when he was making that film, did he have any idea it was going to become a classic war movie, or was it just another war film at the time? I think we, at the time we were just trying to make a nice war film. We had no idea it was going to be that successful or, or last that long because it is. A, it, it's probably the best, uh, I think, of the uh, escape films during World War II. Great film. Yeah. And I love Richard. I'm so happy for him. He's done so well. Was there a lot of camaraderie on that set? Uh, yeah, there was only a little bit that was kind of estranged. Uh, Charlie Bronson was kind of hard to get along with, uh, <laughs> you know. And as a matter of fact, he ended up marrying one of the other guy's wives, uh, you know, after the picture. But other than that, no, it was good. Good. Yeah, we were all good buddies. You know, I have a, a question about actors that that you uh, owe a lot to. Now, how did Henry Fonda figure in your career? Well, when I first uh, started in this business, uh, it was the Kane Mutiny Court Martial of Play, and I was hired to uh, teach Lloyd, uh, not teach, but uh, to cue Lloyd L Nolan for the part of Queeg. And uh, the first day of rehearsals, uh, Lloyd never opened a script. And Henry looked and said, how the hell did he do that, you know? So uh, he told him, and so Henry hired me to cue him for his part, uh, Greenwald. And we became friends. And uh, so all during the, the run of the play, I was kind of a runner and a, and a, you know, I was younger and new and everything. And my first night in New York was uh, uh, at the expense of Henry and Lloyd and John Hodiak. They all said, Our, your first night, and they got me a date. They took me to all the, you know, the great place, the Trocadero and 21 and all that. So we became good friends over the years. And uh, I, I admired Henry so much. He was such a, a professional. He was just, you know, and so dedicated to his work that uh, I learned a lot from him. Yeah. i got a question about uh, politicians. You've met a number of politicians in real life. I'm just wondering, are actors usually more in awe of politicians, or do you find that politicians uh, tend to be more in awe of actors? I think we have to be more in awe of politicians, not politicians themselves, but uh, maybe when you get to the presidency we're in awe of. I don't think the rest of them we care too much about. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I, you know, in my case, uh, I'm much more in awe of uh, the president than I am many actors I know. Yeah. Well, what because uh, they deal with people, they deal with, you know, the human condition around the world, and the president of the United States, the leader of the free world, you have to, you know, put, that's a pedestal yeah. there. Well, playing golf with uh, President Clinton, was that somewhat surreal? And did, was he asking you, tell me about Maverick, tell me about the Rockford Files? <laughs> no, we talked golf, and I played with the president twice. I played with him about three years ago, and uh, we strictly talked about golf. As a matter of fact, the first time I played with him was playing with Arnold Palmer, too. And uh, Arnold was just giving lessons, you know, to the president all, all the time, you know. So I was uh, the third in the group, you know. I was off to the side <laughs> there while the president and Arnold were the, the big stars, and uh, which I liked. I, I enjoyed that. But uh, when we played uh, this last time, uh, we just talked golf and just had a good time. You know, uh, you looked very comfortable on the podium giving speeches in the film. Uh, in, in real life, uh, how comfortable are you uh, doing that task? I'm not good at all. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had to get the commencement speech at Oklahoma University. I didn't have to. I accepted it. And, um, of course, they gave me a doctorate. You'd have to refer to me as Dr. Garner now. <laughs> but uh, I went through eight months of agony. Uh, over having to do that and give that speech. I, I have uh, agoraphobia, and uh, which is, for those who don't know, is the fear of public speaking. And it is just like pulling teeth with me. It's terrible. Uh, and and because I'm saying something now, I can go in front of a camera and say a writer's words, that's no problem. But when I am giving the speech and it's my words, then I, I scared to death. <laughs> and, and one last question uh, about formative experiences that a, a person goes through. Uh, you were in Korea and you won the Purple Heart. What was that time like for you? Uh, and do you, is, is that something you still think about now? No, not much. And that was just a time of survival. 
you know, you get over there and you're just saying, I just want to live through this, you know. And I think most soldiers are that way when they get into a war zone. They, you know, they just want to live and, you know, get out the best way they can. And uh, if you could get wounded <laughs> where it sends you back home and you didn't hurt too much, you'd do that. <laughs> what, what exactly happened? Like, how did, how did oh, you get injured? Oh, I, 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 we got caught by Well, the first time I got wounded was a mortar attack. And uh, we were on a patrol, the mortar attack, and I got some shrapnel. The second time we were uh, caught behind the lines, a big push from uh, the north to the south. We were about eight miles behind the lines, and I, got, I really got shot by our own uh, Navy Panther jets. Wow. Oh. The 20 millimeter rockets. Oh, not, not a good experience. Uh, no, <laughs> not fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much, sir. It's yeah. a pleasure meeting you there. And, and is Rockford Files finally in the black now? Is it, is it making money on the. I uh, think it's probably going to make some money now. <laughs> <All right. laughs>